Feral ghouls, raiders, super mutants. When facing the horrors of the wasteland, remember your greatest ally is not a fat man or a mini nuke. It's capitalism. Welcome to Deep Thoughts While Gaming. I'm Chris Chappell, and welcome to the wasteland. Where you see desolation, I see opportunity. Not just for new friends and companions but economic opportunity. Your wife murdered? Take her wedding ring and sell it. She won't be needing it anymore, boys. In fact, the Wasteland provides bountiful corpses for an enterprising entrepreneur to loot and sell their goods. Soon you'll be rolling in bottle caps, looking sharp. In a world set in the aftermath of a nuclear war between the United States and China, all around you, you can see evidence that America won the war. You see it in every settlement, every trading center and city in game. Because even after a nuclear Armageddon, capitalism survives. Take that, you filthy commies. The free exchange of goods and bottle caps flows. Yes, bottle caps are the new currency. So pop yourself a couple dozen Nuka-Colas and make your fortune today. Now you might be thinking, how could such a wacky currency as bottle caps have any value? Unlike more serious currencies of sheets of paper with pictures of dead presidents, which you can find fat stacks of throughout the wasteland. Well, in the original and best fallout, bottle caps as a currency made sense. In the New California Republic, or NCR, bottle caps were the accepted currency at a major trading center and settlement known as the hub for two primary reasons. After the Great War, it was impossible to make new bottle caps. Everything from the paint used to the metal type and the manufacturing, all of that technology was lost. That meant not only were bottle caps scarce and therefore valuable, but they were practically impossible to counterfeit. This preserved the value against inflation. And most importantly, water merchants accepted them. Since purified water was the most sought after commodity in the irradiated wastelands, having bottle caps meant you could get clean water. And so bottle caps had value. By the time of Fallout 2, the NCR had minted their own currency backed by gold. Bottle caps were now worthless. In fact, there's an unmarked quest in Fallout 2 called Typhon's Treasure, which upon completion rewards the player with 10,000 now completely worthless bottle caps. But that's not where the story of Fallout's currency ends. Eventually, the NCR and the Brotherhood of Steel go to war, because war never changes. The Brotherhood began raiding the NCR's gold supplies, forcing them to stop minting new gold coins altogether. That forced the NCR to abandon the gold standard and establish a fiat currency. Citizens panicked about the loss of value of their money made a run on the banks. But without the gold to realize the sudden rush of withdrawals, inflation exploded and faith in the currency collapsed, leading to a return to the trusty bottle cap. As you can see in the latest version of Fallout, the bottle cap is still going strong. The lessons of Fallout's currency should not be lost upon the stalwart defenders of American democracy in the real world, Washington, D.C. Money needs to have real value. Bottle caps in of themselves don't have worth, but they're valuable because everyone in the wasteland agrees they are, even if they aren't made of gold. In 1933, then US President FDR abandoned the gold standard. But since you aren't scrounging around inside your pockets for bottle caps, obviously the US dollar is still going strong other than the average price of a house back then costing about $4,000 compared to $400,000 today. But how far can you push that? There's an ever skyrocketing national debt. How do you afford an endless stream of government programs? Why, it's thanks to deficit spending. Spending money you don't have. But wait, Chris, you say, how do you spend money you don't have? The answer is by printing more of it. I tried that in to jail, but it works great for the government. It's the ultimate cheat code. Need more stuff? Just print money. But Chris, you say, isn't that what Venezuela did? Until their money lost so much value, 
it was cheaper to use money than toilet paper? Well, that's because unlike the US government, the Venezuelan government didn't do it right. They printed too much too fast and everyone knew it. Bam, inflation. The US government does it more subtly. See, they don't print money, no. They just do a thing called quantitative easing. Those are big words. It must be science way over my head and yours too, which is why there are no bank runs in America. But what about charts like this, you ask, that show the amount of money in the US just keeps going up and up? I say awesome, more money for everyone. The entire global economy revolves around the US dollar. There's a reason you can't buy purified water with that monkey NFT you wasted all your bitcoins buying. Even China's currency relies largely on the US dollar, so they'd better not get any ideas about dropping a nuke on us, because if they do, they'd be nuking their own currency as well. So if it's not backed by gold and we just keep printing more of it, what exactly is propping up the value of America's ever-growing piles of cash? Why? Nothing but the full faith and credit of the government of these United States. And that's good enough for me. Thank you for watching Deep Thoughts While Gaming. And remember, now that you know how our money works, the illusion is broken, the global economy will collapse, and we'll soon be hunting each other in the wasteland. So why not get rid of some of that worthless money in your pocket by supporting Deep Thoughts While Gaming? We have a new crowdfunding site over at patreon.com slash gamersunbeaten, or you can hit that join button to become a channel member. You'll get access to an exclusive Discord server, live streams, videos, emojis, and a death claw around every corner. And click on this video about why Paul is not the hero of Dune.